Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Nerd Night Roundtable. With me right now is Mikey. How you doing, Mikey? I'm doing fantastic. How you doing? Uh, not too bad. Okay, cool, Gorilla. Oh, it's the week. weekend. Yay! <laughs> hey, this one, are just you one more any... day. Five. Yeah. Are you getting any uh, rain this weekend? We're getting uh, uh, what is it? Two and a half inches of tape? Yeah. About two and a half inches of snow tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, I don't think we'll be getting any snow, but uh, maybe a little bit of rain. Yeah, that's why I coming down from a little early hot streak. Started the week off in the 70s, tapered down a little bit. But uh, let's get into some of the stuff from the week. George Lucas. To oh, what should have been no a surprise. Snow Back storm. Iger. In the map. Hey, Hi. Tim Stock. How you doing? I need the mark. I'm sure you have an opinion on the George Lucas thing. If you want to come up and talk about it. And we actually have that snow. Hey, Tim. Hey, girl. Hey, how you doing? Doing good. Uh, I didn't know the guy. I didn't know the guy who did who did the pistol whipping, but I thought, but I did know the guy who got pistol whipped. <laughs> I knew they'd fit in somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so I'll have to go. Uh, I I never see the guy, so <laughs> but I know who he is. I'll have to give his kids a crap the next time I see him. Yeah. Uh, you heard about the George Lucas thing? Hey, gorilla. Week? No, I did not. What what happened? And hey, Mikey. He he apparently publicly backed Iger. Oh, that. Oh. Okay. A lot of people, especially Doom, hey, were very pissed off. But no one should be surprised that he backed Iger. Iger basically saved his butt in the early 90s. He wasn't doing too well as far as project goes, and Iger essentially got him young Indiana Jones on the air. So in George Lucas's mind, Iger saved his butt, and he's been loyal to him ever since. So there should be no surprise he backs Iger 100%. Anyone who gaslit themselves into believing otherwise was being naive. Yes. Or just ignorant. Yeah, well, fully so. Because yeah. he definitely would hold his friendship with Iger higher than just some creative project. I know people like to say, oh, it's like his kids, but it ain't his kids. You're going to hold your kids, your family, your friends above whatever you do for work, no matter what it is. I know. I know some people who, who, who disagree with that. They take, they do their work above their family. And they have a very severe neuroses. Hmm. <laughs> this is probably true. Oh. So. That up. Either of you have an opinion on the subject? No, not really. Yeah, Mikey. Well, I yeah. Well, I heard recently that uh, Lucas never actually offered well to sign the contract to turning over his entire Lucasfilm company. But then I heard that somebody else had uh, faked his signature on it, and it was done that way. And I said, well, no, that can't be true because, you know, Lucas is, a, at the time, Lucas was supposed to be of sound mind. I, I would think that if he is yeah. of sound mind, he would have signed the contract and, in effect, turning all of his uh, property over. Yeah, I, I don't think that's even questionable at this point. It's been no, over I a decade. No like. Yeah, but I mean, people accusing uh, of Disney falsifying and then, like, 
his signature and all this. Way. I don't know where all that came from. Because I, I absolutely remember the day when they announced that Lucasfilm became a Disney property. And I said, well, yeah, but I mean, there's a lot of reasons that Lucas sold it off. And there were other reasons that, you know, his buddy Iger was, was too, you know, greedily ready to take it, you know. And apparently he hasn't done very well with it. So, you know, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's a bit of an understatement. Yeah. Well, I'm being kind. <laughs> don't forget, I grew up when I when when Disney was actually decent, and they had good and they had good cartoon movies, you know, animated films. And then all of a sudden, they all went to they they suddenly joined the dark side, literally. No pun intended. Yeah. Around the early two thousands, everything started going straight to hell for them. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Hey, by the way, I don't mean to change the subject, but I found out that there's a new James Bond, Aaron Taylor Johnson. I don't know who that is. He was in the, uh, he was in the Kick-Ass movies. He was that guy that was dressed in the green uh, outfit. He was Kick-Ass? What was his name? Aaron Taylor Johnson. Yeah, he was in Kick Ass. He was in a few other films, but uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Never even heard of him. Ugh. He looks like a dork. Come on, show a picture. Uh, let's see if I can get images up. Present. Share screen. Right. Screen two. Andy Boot Becky. Uh at the stage. This is what pops up when I search them. So sorry, buddy. Huh? Yeah. Well, it's not too bad. James Bond, he's not. Welcome back, Mikey. Oh. You have a Mikey. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Take Are you two. Job? We don't have to ba boot you out again. <laughs> Uh. How did that guy get the role of James Bond? That is... Yeah. Well, he... yeah, so apparently... Yeah, so apparently oh, Aaron Taylor Johnson... Uh, like I said, he did some kick out. He did both kick ass movies, kick ass and kick ass 2. Uh, unfortunately, kick ass 2 was the sucky one that had Jim Carrey in it. Yeah, uh, but he has done other movies besides, yeah, he's done other movies besides that. And he's in his early 30s. And I think Barbara Broccoli, you know, who's one of the, the tandem with uh, Michael G. Wilson, said that he was perfect for the role. And they can take it in a new direction, but they don't need to change. The whole outlook of the story after uh, Daniel died. They just they just want to uh, to bring it in a in a different way or maybe more modern way. I guess that's yeah, that's the that means uh, they want to make it more woke. Well, not more woke. Come on, Aaron Taylor Johnson, not a woke actor. At least I I've hope. Seen him. I've seen Kick Ass. He is a Beta little cuck boy, and I think he's actually American. He is. That's the scary part. That's the most offensive part about that. James Bond should not be a freaking American. I agree. If he's not from the UK, it's not fucking James Bond. I I agree. Uh, I know. He, this he should be, be just a horrible, horrible English. 
<laughs> Preferably <laughs> English. Preferably English, <laughs> but Scottish is allowable. Scottish is allowable and British is allowable. But American? Yeah. How's yeah. he going to disguise? Well, I'm just saying he's American. So how's he going to disguise his accent? That's the problem. Welsh it's isn't even acceptable. I, I agree. Be English or Scottish? I I agree. Well, I believe. Well, I thought that the the name Taylor uh, was originally a form of Scottish name or a surname, maybe. Uh, I believe it's English. And hey, Tim's talk. Okay, let's see what IMDb has to say about this guy. English stage actor. I'm just, I, you know, yeah, you know, fellas, I'm, I'm just a little worried. Irish. Yeah, I'm just a little worried, and I agree with you. Yeah. And they want to put it out by uh, late 2025, I believe. All he has to do oh, is finish. Uh, yeah. All he has to do is finish uh, the stipulation that he gets the contract signed and done. But it's basically a no-brainer. They're going to take him. They've already said. I mean, and uh, as far as uh, announcement, they haven't made a formal announcement yet. But as soon as they do, they're going to go right into pre-production. So, that's the rumor going right now, but it's very strong rumor. So. Oh well, they already killed James Bond once. They might as well reincarnate him as a, a worse than a woman, a bloody American, <laughs> a Yankee. I'm not sure if he is American. <laughs> IMDb is saying he's Eng is saying he's English. Well, yeah, I don't know. He's rather short, too. Five foot eleven. Yeah, he's taller than I am. Gorilla, you're five foot three. Your kid is taller than you. I'm five five, thank you. I'm five seven and a half. Thank you very much. I'm taller than a gorilla. <laughs> yeah, this is very very troubling. I didn't think they could get I... worse than what they did with the last couple Daniel Craig movies, but this is looking like a disaster already. Uh, I think you got a pile of James Bond on the pile of, uh, on the stack of dead franchises. Um, uh oh, Hello. he's fading. We lost you, Mikey. Yeah, we lost it completely. Uh, he'll reset. It'll take a minute. Oh. So what else is on the board here? I don't know. Let's see what else we got in the news. Uh, we've got Frozen Empire starting tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So hopefully here uh, we'll, we'll, I'll be able to manipulate the algorithm tonight. Yeah, that'd be nice.
I don't think I'll be able to get through that entire thing, though. You won't be able to? No, I've never been able to sit through that entire thing without uh, physical damage to something. Well, I um. <laughs> Yeah, so what's what's your overall uh, take on it? Well, I guess I know Riz Lutherum's take, but what's your take on it, Gorilla? Uh, James Bond there, was, I haven't even seen the first one, so, you know, it's like not my place to even say anything. Uh-huh. <clears throat> well, yeah, as I said, as I said before, when Daniel Craig was doing it, he is related to my, to my wife because her maiden name was Suzanne Craig. So yeah, she was related to him by blood, but on her father's side of the family. So I felt like I, you know, I felt like because I thought he did a decent James Bond, especially after he did Casino Royale, I was like, oh, okay, you know, I'll hang with this guy. But I was really bummed out when he died, you know, at the end of No Time to Die, you know. I mean, Bond doesn't do that. Bond doesn't kill himself, you know. Very scary situation, and that and that was the last film that included. Uh, well, that was the last film. Uh, Sony didn't even sponsor that film. That last one. Their last one they did was Spectre, and after that, they they uh, they dumped the property and just left it back to you know MGM or whoever else ran it. And I guess maybe that's why it failed. But yeah, no. Yeah. Well, in the hands of uh, Amazon. Yeah, Amazon, right. Right there so next to Stargate. And people are desperate to get new Stargate. Why do you want new Stargate if Amazon owns it? They'll just do to that what they did to Lord of the Rings. Oh, you think they destroyed Lord of the Rings? Did you see Rings of Power? Oh, no, no, I'm not including Rings of Power, no. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> I don't even include it as canon. I I just go yeah, I just no. go Yeah. No, I just go with The Hobbit, you know, the three movies of The Hobbit, and then The Hobbit animated movie, which I kind of would fit like right in between the two franchises and then Lord of the Rings. Yeah, The Hobbit animated movie is those first three movies. Oh, it really is. Yeah. Okay. That's true. But I mean, I own the I, we we own the first, yeah. first three. They just they just fucked that cartoon sideways and plopped out those three pieces of crap that looked more animated than the actual cartoon. They soaked it in so much CGI, and they just pulled the story out so much that to get three movies worth. It's just unwatchable. Right. Well, you, you could also tell, right, a gorilla, uh, Germ and Gorilla? Um, I did I did some research on both franchises, and it's amazing. I mean, Lord of the Rings got 17 Academy Awards out of 30 nominations. Which is beyond me. The I guess Hobbit people were impressed by the way it looked. One, one Oscar. That's more than it deserved. Ooh, sorry, but I think Lord of the Rings, kind of like Avatar, got way too much credit for the way it looked, which now, decades later, not that impressive. They realize they. In the case of Lord of the Rings, they didn't do it quite right. And in the case of Avatar, it was a piece of crap from beginning to end. Complete piece of crap. It's like someone got high, read The Last of the Mohicans, and then vomited something into a sci-fi setting. I oh, know. I think I I really enjoyed Lord of the Rings. I thought it was a little wild paced and everything. And 
I enjoy. I, I didn't. I don't find it very dull. Even even the extended versions are are good. Right, there we go. Again. Mikey's back. Uh, they they have no rewatchability for me. Okay. The books I've read several times over the course of my life. The books hold up. Yeah, the I books are great. They're still I, timeless. I, can, I, can't watch the, I can't watch the movies. I can't watch the movies. Well, it's just like this last, the last Doom film that they did. The, the last Doom film basically covered just about like everything the first movie did, the original back in 1984. And you don't even want to watch part one because part one is like, uh, it's like it's supposed to be pre stuff, you know, like prequel stuff to what the basic original movie came out with. I read the books, and I think the books were much more fun to read and informative than the movies themselves. But that being said, um, Doom Part 2 didn't use a lot of CGI, or if it did, it was very well hidden. There was a lot of practical stuff in there, a lot of visual, but not a lot of CGI. So, Yeah, I haven't watched either of the new Doom movies that Really wasn't big fan. Well, you know what? It's probably best to wait till the books. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say, if you guys are interested in it, you probably should wait till it comes out on DVD and Blu-ray. It will eventually. Both parts will. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then judge for yourself from that. Yeah. And I guess they dropped a teaser trailer for Beetlejuice too. Oh. Yeah, I was wondering why that was trending on uh, on uh, X. Beetle this just does not look good. Why bother? Yeah, but why bother? I mean, the, the original Beetlejuice and Keaton is fine. You don't need to do other things. Well, it's a cash grab. Yeah. Uh, it's always about cash grab. Fuck. I guarantee you. Why else would they? They make a second field just movie 37 years after the original. Right? It's one thing if it's like a year or two after the original and it did really well. And it's like, okay, people want this. Let's give it to the people what they want. But no, 37, this is a crash game to try to. They, people love the first movie. So let's try and uh, let's try to hone in on that. Yeah, Michael Keaton and Winona Ryder must be hard up for money to agree to do this. <laughs> yeah, they must be. Well, and and I also part, heard that he, he rises yeah. out of the model city. He looks like he's drunk and just got woken up from a park bench. Right. The makeup is smeared. Mm-hmm. Well, then, and then, of nope. course, I just heard, too, that those ladies that were in the Ghostbuster supposed reboot piece of shit, they're getting a second movie. All of those. <laughs> the hell they are. Fuck that. They ain't getting a second movie. Well, the somebody said they franchise were. Franchise is already. Uh, whoever told you that was full of crap because they're move. They've moved on to Afterlife. Afterlife has nothing to do with 2016, and Afterlife is getting its sequel, which debuts tomorrow. Because I, I really hated that one. Yeah, yes, which I'm looking forward to. We're gonna wait a week before we go see it. Yeah, it's probably a good bet. I don't know, let's see it to see what, how the fuck. Yeah, we're, we're gonna up. wait. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wait till it uh, ad comes out. Yeah. Actually, yeah. we're gonna go see a week from today. So, yeah, twenty eighth. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it was a great idea to base a seat, to relaunch the franchise off of Afterlife. That's more of a Tribute to Held Ramus and the franchise. Well, there was, before and then, 
You yeah, well, there was there was nothing wrong with Winston. her life. In fact, we own it. Yeah. As like I said, it's a good little movie, like a tribute movie. Well, but it's not something to relaunch a franchise with. It is. It's good. Well, yeah, but I mean, they brought back just about everybody, you know. Other other than you know, they they didn't get Rick Moranis because he he's retired from acting, and uh, well, for now anyway, because somebody say he's doing something later on. He's trying to come back and do Honey I Shrunk the Kids thing again. Something again? called Shrunk. Yeah, oh, he's calling it fuck. just Shrunk. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. Ruin another fucking movie, why don't you? Yeah. But uh what they really should have done is just I know. Get they I need know. a new team, no. not with that kid from Stranger Things. That kid has very limited acting talent. Oh, you gotta be yeah. more specific. The one they got for Afterlife. Oh, uh, the one that played Will? I think so. Right. The skinny, dorky looking one. Oh, you got to do more with this. <laughs> but that, that seems to be a problem that kids they have in it are all are either skinny looking dweebs or they're some type of. Yeah. Uh, shoot in minority sometimes with a uh, disability, sometimes it's not. They have to check some sort of box with some of the kids for some damn reason. They're kids, that should be enough. But if you've seen Extreme Ghostbusters. That was the way to go for a relaunch. Get a new team. Get one of the ones from the old team. Probably Winston because uh, he's still active. The actor is still active. Uh, Dan Aykroyd is semi-retired. Uh, Bill Murray is, I think, all the way retired. And, well, Harold Ramis is no longer here. But they need a better relaunch. This I don't think is going to do as well as they're hoping. Afterlife was a fun little surprise, but it, it's just obvious it's not going to be the this huge success that they're hoping it's going to be. Especially with a third-rate Avenger as the male lead. Welcome back, Mikey. Oh, thank you, guys. Take five. <laughs> yeah, Gorilla, I know. That that kind of blew me away, too. It's like saying, well, well, well you know, Miranda's, why would he even decide? Why would he come up with an idea like that? That makes no sense. I know he originally... Retired because of his kids. He had to, to think his wife got sick or died or something like that. And spend more time with his kids. Yeah, his fraternal twins. His uh, son and daughter, yeah. But I guess now that they're in college and they're grown up and everything, I guess yeah. now he feels like he needs to go back out there again. Yeah, well, since kids are grown, free to do whatever. Sure. Now, oh. here was, you know, this thing with uh, Ghostbusters. Something about Frozen Empire, I don't... I didn't quite catch it. 
Yeah, I, I didn't understand any of that. Are you gonna, are you gonna go see Frozen Empire? <laughs> yeah, maybe A week or so, probably. Yeah, in Frozen Empire, uh, uh, the guy. Yeah, yeah, he, Mikey completely crashed. Yeah, he'll be back in a minute. Well, all we gotta do is give a new computer. Have him do a drinking stream. Stream there, there. Let's get him drunk, drunk on a fundraiser stream. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, got to get him a new computer and then get him the internet to use that new computer. Well, LDG was actually in the system. He said it was mostly his, <laughs> was mostly his computer. Like ninety percent of the issue is his computer. So we're gonna we're gonna we'll, we'll do a funder in the street for you, Mikey. We'll, we're, but you got to drink every time someone donates. Okay. Well. <laughs> I'm down to drinking Diet Coke and Diet Pepsi, so... Oh, no, 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 no. no. Hey, if you mix some Captain Morgan in those, yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. But we gotta get you stumbling and bumbling like Gorilla was. <laughs> yeah, we want you blacking out like I did. On, did. <laughs> well, maybe not quite like you did. He's... Not in his 30s, so <laughs> need to keep it moderated a bit. I'm almost 60, guys. I turn 60 next year. Hey, Edge of Time, greetings. Hey, hey. Edge of Time, welcome. Hey, Edge, how's it going? Hey, yeah, hey no, I haven't seen uh, Scurvy around. Oh, he'll be around yeah, later. Yeah, I've seen Scurvy around, really. Yeah, oh, I've seen okay. him last night. I mean, he'll, he'll be around. Yeah. yeah, there. Yeah, okay. I hadn't seen him lately. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He usually yeah. gets on. Yeah, it's good to see you, Edge. Time. Yeah, I've seen him last night, so I know he's still yeah. kicking. As of last night, he was still kicking. So. Yeah. I don't know, Mike. We just get you a little bit goofed up and uh, laugh for any, uh, you do one or two stupid things on air. You get a little bit of money rolling in. Uh huh. Well, I am tempted. I am tempted to. Uh, well, we're tempted, I should say. Uh, to get a GoFundMe page so we can get some decent computers and a better internet connection. We we still have to discuss it. It takes a lot of it takes a lot of work. And we have to, you know, I'm not even monetized yet. I'm not I, I'm I'm not even we're not even close to being that yet. So it would have to be like I said, it would have to go through GoFundMe. Be very quiet. I'm hunting ice queen. Good luck on the hunt edge. Yeah. Good. Go for the uh, drumsticks uh, if you see them. Hey, it could be worse, Edge. I went out to the car for a pack of sm smokes there. I ended up at the bar getting tacos. That's a... Uh... Or is it a serious diversion? Yeah, it was. Well, I'll show you so what that for. Oh, hey, like Suzanne X Dean. How are you, Suzanne? <laughs> hey, Suzanne. Hey, Suzanne. <laughs> yeah, that is one very nice lady down there, Suzanne X Dean. 
And my wife says hello to you too, Suzanne. Yeah, it's good to see you. Bacos? No, no, no. That's bacon tacos. Which are very want, good. Damn it, I want some bacon tacos now. Damn it, you fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, whatever you do, don't go to the Mexican restaurant to get them. They get sort of offended if you ask for bacon in the taco. Yo, I don't even know any place. I don't even know any place that sells bacon tacos. I know a guy who made him, but uh, he had a little bit of an unhealthy obsession with bacon. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. You have to have at least 30 packs in your freezer at all times. Yeah, that's good, but you know, hey, that's pretty cool. With, uh... Yeah, that's pretty With uh, what? <laughs> Game of Mist. Mm. Mm. Oh. 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 Ah, try to find an MEG's underground. There's his uh, site. And then help Admiral T save Star Trek. Okay. Yeah, good to see the stream elements back. Is that actually working? See, someone agrees with yeah. me. Yeah, I don't know about what, but someone I agrees. With, oh. They agrees with me. I think about the bacon tacos. Oh, <laughs> I still don't know any place that sells them. Yeah, they're hard to come across. I said I've only asked. A couple places and uh, just say I didn't get the bacon tacos. Were they uh, 30, 30 packs of bacon on hand? Yeah, they that sketchy of a place that they don't have the that you didn't get the bacon tacos. Well, they're not really chain restaurants, so I doubt they're. Doubt they're what? I know uh, they're even out there beyond this area. Oh, and I can't really pronounce the name because I don't speak Spanish. Oh, well, I speak a little bit of Spanish there. I used to know La Migra, it worked very well, but uh, they don't work no more. Yeah. Try that now. They just laugh and say, hey, Biden. <laughs> no. Oh, we lost Mikey. Hey, he'll be back eventually. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's better to have the 30 packs of bacon than the 30 packs of cigarettes. Not very healthy, but probably a little bit healthier than cigarettes. Yeah, well, well, people with the, that say bacon is unhealthy is full of shit because they said uh, for every pound of bacon you eat, eat, eat there, that uh, it takes se seven years off your, or like seven years off your life or something like that. And uh, like that. yeah, well, then by my calculations, I should have died in 1776. That would be something. Is that is that really? Uh, thanks for bringing me back, guys. Um, is that really true? Suzanne Eckstein says she has thirty packs of bacon on hand. <laughs> well, he probably owes some flowers. I mean, that's a lot of BLT sandwiches, man. Oh, six kittens born this morning. Yay! Congratulations. Congratulations! Yes, you're a new mom. There you go. May they be a scourge on the rodent population of your area. My cats wouldn't know what a mouse was if it came up and kicked them in the ass and go, hey, I'm a mouse. <laughs> my mom says it's because I feed them too well. Yeah. 
And those she says, cats hey, are I got dirty packs of cigarettes on hand as well. Okay. I don't know if that's they're, it. They're well prepared for the end of civilization. Get yourself some shotgun and a shotgun and some shells and you can ride it out. Probably already has that too. Uh, that's always good. I keep at least, I think, three weeks, four weeks worth of stuff on hand. Borderline to expiration. Hey, I've been so we got, we got like back of me. We got, uh, past, um, fish. She says her doorbell reloads. <laughs> she's got, she got yeah. traps. She, that woman is ready. She's got traps set for the apocalypse. She's ready for zombies, man. Yeah, zombies are Trudeau's people. She's a step below zombie, actually. Oh, did you hear what the, the Canadian Supreme <laughs> Court just ruled on? That uh, what was that the, the Canadian oh, Supreme, the Supreme, the uh, the and when you're you are in court, there you can no longer call a person a woman. You have to call them a person with a vagina. I don't know if you're joking, but it sounds dumb enough that Trudeau's people uh, actually. I'm not, I, I heard this from Jason, so. Uh, I heard it from right. I I heard it from Jason for what we were doing. Okay, so, oh, for, we're completely fucked. We are as a Western civilization. We are all completely fucked. You heard it here first. Rubber made trash can. You are very well prepared, Suzanne. Rubber-made trash can is, yes. Yeah, it's well, pretty huge, Well, when seven actually. days to dive yeah. becomes a reality, we know where the bunker is. Yeah, we know where you live. Yeah. <laughs> we don't take kindly well, we to where, your pronouns around here. You better not be giving my address out there, Mike. Y'all, I will seriously come up to Canada. Mm. Well, I think I could find you better than you could find me. I'm lost over here in some part of Lake Ontario. Yeah, I got. I know exactly where you're at. There can't be. I I already know a lot about your apartment complex there. Oh, I see. You've been going go, going through Google Maps again. A lot of judge I used to go through Google Maps type. again mega structures like that up there in Canada now. They There's a lot, a lot of them in a regular them. mega city one. Well, yeah, that's what I said. They're building a lot of them actually around Toronto now. A lot of these apartment complexes. Yeah. Well, the one guy, he got he got, he got pissed with because he, he tries to keep his location a secret, even his name a secret. Then he got pissed with it when when I asked him if he was in this vill village over here, here in uh, Britain, he goes, how the hell did you narrow it down? Well, background, you had the slight hits of stuff, like I know you're not near the coast, you know, I know I know this structure is, you're close to this type of place, you know, all I had to, all I had to do is put, look it all up and pinpoint it. Yeah, and really all I had to do is call the Toronto Fire Department and ask him what which building do they get called to every night? The most. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. That's probably the best way to find us. Yeah. Hey, who gets called the most? Yeah, who calls for the yeah. most? And, and I know which floor you're on, so then basically they go from there, just start go pounding on doors from there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's Not hard to answer. find, it's hard to get Not to. Hard That's to find, good. It's hard to get to, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> 
Well, it's not uh, very easy to get to us either. I mean, but mm -hmm. yeah, but I mean, if you fake that, if you fake something going on, Gorilla, and then you, oh, by the way, I should ask you, do you have your passport in place? I don't need no damn passport. I identify as Oh, the fuck you don't. Come on, man. <laughs> you need a passport. You're not going to get over the border. That's okay. Unless you have a passport. Gorilla, I can lend you a passport. Shot. You Do you want to be from America? Do you want to be from Canada? Do you want to be from freaking Swahili? Yeah, and if I, <laughs> if I really got desperate, I could make a couple phone calls. I could have a whole new identification set up in 48 hours. Oh, cool. Social security number and everything. Oh, cool. All right. So you look like... Uh, so what do, you, what do you want us to make for you when you come visit it? Mm -hmm. Hey, make some authentic Canadian poutine. Oh, poutine, we can do that. Suzanne's a great cook. She knows how to cook a poutine. It's got it's kind of like when I go to if I ever do manage to get to Eagle there, I'll have to have some Yorkshire pudding for sure. Uh, and maybe a few other authentic British dishes. Well, there you go. Suzanne just, uh, yeah, Suzanne just answered it for you. She's a gorilla. No, no. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. you go. Let in anyone. They'll just rob you blind at the crossing. They'll rob you blind again as you try to leave. Yeah. See. Let's... People jump back down mm -hmm. in there. Oh, so we're not saying I just got to come up there. And He'll help the people that are trying to leave, you know, before what's his face gets in and starts World War Three. Hey, we're we're already we're militarizing in the southern border. We got yeah, no problem the militarizing the northern last, border. Let's be attacked. World War Three has already started. We're just not acknowledging really? it yet. Yeah. Uh, funny enough, it wasn't the commies who started it. Well, okay, it's in the early stages, but until you start seeing mushroom clouds going up with St. Paul, you know. Okay, okay. So, so every city in the world can be bombed, but it's not World War Three until until the mushroom clouds form. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I never would have bet it was America who started World War Three. Mm. Then never would have bet that we'd have a corpse for a president. <laughs> oh. Hmm. It is yeah. gonna be rather funny when whatever cockroaches evolve into <laughs> the, do a deep dive and find the historical records and. Oh look, there's oh, they know. had this weakened and Bernie thing tied to strings and they puppeted him in front of people. Yeah. No, the fuck the I I seen a funny meme there. It had that uh, uh like I said uh, uh, and like I said, Toronto is not not that far the Toronto goes, we all go. Yeah. No, but uh um they're, they had this like pu is like a puppet thing. I can't remember which puppet it was from. It looks like something from Sesame Street, but it was it? But it had the it had the eyes going sideways there. And it goes <laughs> when, when when you're back when when you're at your World War Three and you're on the same team that lost the uh, lost the last two war World Wars. <laughs> yeah. Well, you never said it was the Germans. Yeah, everything seems to go wrong when the Germans get involved. They yeah, crushed but... the Roman Empire. They destroyed Europe twice. Twice? Well, I, I suppose you could blame the Napoleon for the Napoleonic Wars. Then the French and the British, they were always going at it for the longest time. How did the yeah. French and the British ever end up on the same team? Accident. 
They were at war. They were at each other's throat, throats there for centuries there. Like, there's a shit ton of wars against them. Well, Empire makes strange bedfellows. Especially when uh, royalty can't keep it in their pants. I suppose. Uh-huh. Well, the monarchy anyway. Well, the All right. royalties are generally monarchies. All right. Oh, you guys have a, a fun chat here. I'm going to go shower before there's. Uh, I'm going to go take a shower here before okay. we get into... We got uh, about a half hour until we start. 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Okay. And welcome right. to Panawanabe. Hey, Panawanabe. Hey, Panawanabe. Oh, uh, we're just talking about the complete nu nuking of the earth right now. But uh, anyhow, oh, we'll, I'll catch you at uh, Cringe Talk there, Germ. All right. See you, girl. Right, yeah. So uh, what's he doing for Cringe Talk tonight, Germ? Ghostbusters 2016. Yikes! He's doing the bitches. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm predicting no survivors from that one. Uh, yeah. I've only but seen it once. Hopefully he hits the algorithm. Well, yeah, but I, I've only I've seen it once. Most of it. I mean, just once. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> I did get a little liberal with the skip button when I went through it. Bet you did. <laughs> and by liberal, I mean five seconds, cringy joke, skip. Another cringy joke, skip, 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 skip. Yep, skip, skip, skip. Absolutely. Hey, Potawatomi, we had a question earlier. Uh, if you've seen the article uh, from The Sun uh, in England there, uh, the, the London Sun, they were talking about a brand new James Bond. They found Aaron Taylor Johnson. He was the guy who did the Kick-Ass movies, both the first one and the second one, along with a few other films he's done. But originally he's American. And, uh, well... I'm not sure about I that. I don't know. Though. What's your opinion on that, Pat Wannabe? Or Suzanne Nickstein? Do you think Aaron Taylor Johnson's the answer, or do you think they should keep searching? I think they should keep searching personally, but that's me. Yeah, judging from what I've seen of him, he is not anywhere near qualified. Well, he doesn't look the part, right, Jern? To say the least. Oh, yeah. And I mean, we're being nice. You know, he just doesn't like it. He, he doesn't look it. I'd be worried. Yeah, search. That's what Suzanne says. I agree. They should keep searching. Yeah. I mean, give it to Idris Elba. At least he's a proper Englishman. But he's black. And he's English, which means he's qualified. Oh, he's qualified. Other guy, okay. Yeah. This other guy. Well, now, you were just. He okay, may or may not be English. About, okay, now, look, I'm not racist against Idris Elba, okay? I don't mind it. I don't think that. I, I, I think that he might be a pretty good bond. But the thing is. If people are still discussing wokeness, well, I'm sorry to say it, but Elba would be woke. Not if he plays the part right. Hey, Hello, what's up, Lemon? Lemon well, because okay. all you really need to be Bond is to be I English, just, be suave, you know what I mean? I've never and we've shoot always. People. Yeah, we've all, we've always assumed that, you know, he's either an Englishman or Scottish, and Scottish being acceptable, but we never associated him with being, a, you know, an African native or, uh, you know, or an African yeah. Englishman, or 
Yeah, you know, some guy from South Africa. <laughs> we, and Elba was we born never, in England. We never associated Bond that way. So And uh, Bond is it's yeah. not a single character. Each each different actor is playing a different secret agent with a, the same secret code name. Because they've double backed on themselves with that too many times to right. explain well, it any other way. If you look at each of the different bonds, yeah, but if the past seven bonds had played it, they were all, all in some way, they were either, like, like you said, they were either English or Scotsmen. They all came from backgrounds yeah. where their parents died or they just, they were single orphans and, you know, with, with, uh, you know, they were recruited right away, and and uh, I don't know, man. Aaron Taylor Johnson just doesn't seem to fit the part. I mean, I wouldn't have a problem with him being in it. Well, maybe I'd have to wait till later to find out. Make him Q. I don't want to wait till later. I want someone that I know for sure is gonna is gonna play it right. Yeah, and he doesn't have the acting chops to play it right. Even if he's full blooded yeah, English, I, I agree with you. He doesn't have the look. He doesn't have. You know who I would like? The current screen yeah, presence. You know who I would like? I'd like Henry Cavill to do it. What do you think? Yep. Who? He's got a good screen presence. Henry Cavill yeah, would be good. I like Cavill. Henry Cavill. He would. No, what's your personal pick if you had to pick one? Uh, good, sticking with. Elba, I think, would do a good job. He's a very good actor. Uh, if you've seen Luthor, uh, uh -huh. that great screen presence, he'd do well. Yeah. He, he just can't so, be in a okay. lot of them because he's saying, about the same age as Daniel Craig is. Sure. Yes, that's true he is. Yeah. I, I'm just saying, but you wouldn't have a problem uh, him being, uh, you know, African. Originally, though, African English. No, he, he's born and bred in England. So, and he's obviously got the talent as an actor to do it. So he qualifies. And also, they've never had a black person play Bond, so maybe that would be different. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, they can finally confirm on screen that. They're not all the same character. They're all just 007, and whoever gets the title of 007, their code name is James Bond. Instantly, yes. Well, it's like I tried to tell. Um, it's like I tried to tell Daniel. Uh, you know, Daniel's hot topics. Daniel. Yeah. Um, I was trying to tell him that when they went from. You know, Pierce Brosnan to Daniel Craig, people had an issue with Craig because of his, you know, his hair color and, and different and whatever. He is a 100% Scott, you know, he is Scottish. Yeah. And so I have no problem with that. Now, as far as his hair is concerned, uh, no, I was, I was fine with that too. They're all just given the code name, like you said. So I don't have an issue with that. As long as they're just, as long as they're given that one code. And they're given that one designation of 007, then I'm totally fine with it. And they do have to have a certain presence and certain behavior about them. They have to be charming, a bit of an alcoholic, violent when they need to be. Yeah. They have to now, fit the same now, psychological Suzanne, pattern. Right. Now, Suzanne Nixteen said she won't watch a black bond. That's fine, uh, Suzanne. I mean, that's your total choice. Yeah. I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fault you for that, because we're all used to seeing Bond as, like we said, white guys. You know. Yeah, as long as yeah. he's male. Yeah, we don't yeah, want a female clear. Bond. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> we don't want that. Yeah, female secret agents really don't work out too well. <laughs> if you look over the history of female secret agent movies. And you can see how badly they were done. Yeah. Uh, yeah, totally there's agree. no real way to do it well. Uh, 
I could call him 007, but not calling him Bond. That sounds reasonable enough. Call him anything else. Yeah. Get some of the other double O's in the movie, too. Key. Not the name, necessarily. Just calling him 007 is totally fine. You know, you don't have to call him James Bond. Hell, you could call him Harry if you want. <laughs> Just Bond, Harry Bond or something. <laughs> yeah, something yeah. like that. That's really all about the number. Yes, I get that too. Yeah. The, the name, oh, the way they've treated with all the actors and everything, yeah. there's no other real in-universe explanation than it. it's a code name that goes along with the 007 moniker. Because you can't have a guy in the 70s named James Bond working for Universal Exports and a guy in the 2000s of the same name working for the same company. Says, oh, yeah, that guy, that was my father working for the company back then. It's actually a line I'm surprised they haven't used before. Just like call back to have say, oh yeah, that guy being like well, Pierce Brosnan. And, and they eased Bond, Bond and indoctrinated into the service. Yeah. So immediately their identity was changed. Yeah. Yes, she was. They 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 actually uh, the actress who plays her now, Naomi Harris. Where they showed you uh, that Eve Money Penny was actually an agent before she went and uh, uh, helped out uh, M. Yeah, yeah, she was an agent at yeah. some point in the books. If you see it, um, I read. I used to read a lot of the Bond books, and in From Russia with Love, uh, that's the first time that uh, 007 actually identifies Money Penny as a fellow agent. If you read the book. In the movie, it's not really defined that way, but if you do read the book, that's the first time he actually identifies her as a fellow agent. So yes, she's she's been an agent before. Yeah, she's just I know in the movie she was now. she was in training to be a double O, but she washed right. out and became a M secretary. Yes, that's true. Yeah, O O five. Well, I don't know if she was O O five. She just, I don't know if she really had a number. She was just, she was just doing some field work. According, like I said, from Russia with Love, according to that book, according to the novel, she was actually training to become a double O, to become a double O agent. And then for some reason, they felt like because of her intelligence, they could use her better in the office to send fellow agents uh, to their missions. Because don't forget, Roger Moore said in, in as Bond in one of the few uh, uh, later on movies, he said, "Money Benny, you're better than a computer, in all sorts of ways." She says, "But you never act on them." <laughs> yeah. So if he recognized that she had a computer-like brain, then she must have been trying to become an agent, but just didn't have the. Uh, Maybe she didn't have the uh, killer know. instinct. Killer instinct, yeah. That's what it was in the uh, Daniel Craig movies. She didn't take the shot properly, and basically, that's what washed her out. Yeah. Well, she did. She did almost kill James Bond himself. <laughs> yeah. Off the tree, <laughs> man. And they had to do that fall in one take. You know, that was obviously a stunt man, but they had to do it in one take. That that is insane. Just falling off that a train and a bridge like that. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that twice. Yeah, no. But that's but that's the beauty of the films. 
Um, and I was curious too. Somebody asked me the other day, or uh, I was talking with Suzanne here about uh, Never Say Never Again, which, you know, that was the last one that Connery did, which came out right around the same time that Octopussy came out in 83. But his movie, came, his own independent Bond film came out before Octopussy did. And it was just a little bit after uh, For Your Eyes Only. Now, I've argued with Daniel in the past about that movie. I said, well, obviously it's not quite canon because it wasn't done by the actual production company that did it. Uh, but at the same time, it is Connery. He's playing. Yeah, I'd say Connery is the so, deal breaker there. Maybe he's playing he's 007. A, it's it's way over for the actual M and the actual Q and you know, who he calls uh, Algernon. Bond a name for any 007, or is it Bond one man? They're never a hundred percent on that, but the way they've twisted and turned everything throughout yeah. the years, it has to be... Yeah, now Lizard Pie is asking, is Bond a name for any 007 or is Bond one man? I, I think he's just one man. Yeah, he, yeah. Yeah, they just, they just assign it to one man. All right, yeah. Welcome back, back girl. Yep, I feel all clean now. Good for you. No, so my cat gave me the, the I'm going to murder you in your sleep look, though. Hey, he was standing there, yeah. Because he was just standing there right out, right out, right, right next to the bathtub there. But there, when I got up, hey, uh, Gorilla, out you're... of the shower. Gorilla, do you have the like... kids this weekend? No. No. Well, I might have Owen, but no. But the cat was sitting there right outside the bath bathtub the whole time, waiting for me to get out. So as soon as I opened up the curtain, there I just started flicking water at him, and every time he moved, I flicked some more water at him. Yeah, he's gonna try to kill you in your sleep. Yeah, you're lucky he's fat and lazy. He might just forget. Yeah. At least, uh, at least I hope we, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, at least we uh, hopefully explained it to you, Love Pie. It, it's important now to find the right guy to play Bond. And right now, I think they're they're pushing the button a little too early. Yeah. And hey, that's scurvy. Yeah, but uh, do you have an actor, Gorilla, that you'd think would be a good Bond? How old does that yeah, actor? Like. Is there an age limit on the actor? Yeah. Uh, not quite in a walker. Oh, <laughs> Timothy Oliphant. Oh, Oliphant. Yeah. Okay, I could see that. Timothy's still old enough to do it. But that's just because I don't know any British actors, except oh, uh, Sir Patrick Stewart. Oh, God, no. And he might as well be dead. He might as well be dead, yeah. <laughs> well, in Picard, well, most of his scenes of Picard was always of him sitting down because he couldn't stand. <laughs> Suzanne says, mine is trying to stuff her kids under my blanket. <laughs> Good one. Go ahead, Suzanne. That's great. Love that. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that Gorilla agrees that he would like his Bond to be English and or Scottish. And, and it has to be from the country itself. Well, I, yeah, well, I don't know many actors from Britain. Yeah, I don't yeah. think all of Fonts exactly fell in that role. Maybe not. But I don't know. But, you know, there aren't many people that can play this role now, Jern. It really isn't. 
It's a very small no. list. Yeah, unfortunately, too many skinny, untalented, nearsighted, basically soy boys. They just can't do the job. Uh, Tom Hardy would be a choice, but uh, I don't think Sony would let him live to regret it. And depending on Tom Hardy's success with Fury Road, I think maybe, or with Venom. Uh, you know, it'd with be the Venom, he's not he in did. Furiosa. Sure. No, I, I think Tom Hardy would probably be better suited if he sticks with Venom. I like them in both Venom films. It wasn't okay in Fury Road, but I, I actually prefer his Venom role, actually. He plays that much better. Holy crap, all fonts from Hawaii. Yeah. Well, Gorilla, what do you think about uh Germ was proposing Idris Elba, the black guy from England, the black actor? What did I say like two minutes ago? I don't know any British yet. I don't watch British TV. He's been in several American things. Yeah. He was in Thor. Oh, now this is funny. Yeah. Suzanne Weinstein said that. I'm sorry. I don't watch uh, British TV, or I don't want. I haven't watched any of the MCU stuff yet. <laughs> Scurvy said Polly Shore. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. No, I, unfortunately, I he's this. Canadian. I think Ryan Reynolds is fine with his Deadpool thing. Yeah. Depends on how well it's going to do. Yeah, he's Canadian. Yeah. He's more suited to what he's doing right now. And I know you're joking. I really would be happy to see Ryan Reynolds succeed with Deadpool. And, uh, I thought and Paul Shore was yeah. dead. Yeah, not Polly Shore. <laughs> not Polly Shore dead. Polly, you said? Polly Shore. I can find out here in a, in a second. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Yeah, you know the guy that. Uh... You know the actor that plays. Uh, He's Keaton, still alive. John He's still uh, I think it would be to play Bond myself. Yeah. So. For some yeah, reason, I, uh, that's my. He was dead. Maybe no, just wishful thinking. Uh, you might have seen a death hoax. And then probably likes James Cavill. Yeah, Shaw, Hugh. That's crazy. <laughs> Charlie Waves. Yeah, Cavill. Yeah, it's a good choice. I like it's James Cavill. Yeah, you know what? Cavill. Cavill's got the stage present. I think he's done uh, an impossible franchise. Uh, Cavill has the best. He's got the line on it. Now the question is, are they just rushing it too much with Aaron Taylor? Or could they have James just swoop in in the last minute and say, look, I can play this role. I am from Britain, and it's suited for me. I can play a spy. That's the whole yeah. thing with Cavill. Yeah. Well, he was already a spy in that uh, cashmere thing. Well, yes, he was. But it was. Don't forget, he was also a spy in uh, the Mission Impossible movie, the Fallout one. Yeah, and so I do hope you he, mean Henry not Cavill, a, not James Cavill. Yeah, not James Cavill. Sorry, Henry Cavill. Sorry, 
Yeah, lemon pie, Henry Cavill. Yeah, I know, but I knew who you meant. Yeah. Oh, you have a great uh, night too, Suzanne Eckstein. Good to see you. Yeah. Have a good night, Suzanne. Yeah, have a good night, Suzanne. Hey, Gap After Dark. How you doing? It's Gappy. Hey, Gap. Hey. Welcome to the show. Welcome. That franchise is pining for the... Fjords. Fjords. Even worse than Star was. A new hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice play on words there, Edge of Time. Yeah, Gap, we're doing good. Month's almost over. I'm ready to start yeah. my streams five days a week, starting April 1st. Hey, hey that's, the man of, that's the man of many words, Cody guy. Hey, yeah. Cody. Cody man. That, yeah, I don't think we'll be talking about Star Wars really ever again. I know Star Wars is dead. To me, it is now a... I'm going to treat it like it is public domain. Oh, there you go. So, go ahead and make whatever you want. If Disney has a problem with it, let them waste money by suing you. Because they don't got Absolutely. the money to spare. Absolutely. Well, you know, um, I think the Anything last thing you can do to bleed was, the mouse. Yeah. Well, I think the last straw for me was definitely the last one, the ninth one, the return of Skywalker. That was the last straw. I think by that time, it's it's it 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 had its demise already written all over. It it, it just had to it just had to struggle to die at the end. Video it's games kind of make more money than movies and TV. Yeah. The rest of these. Yeah. Video games. Yeah. Well, well some of them do. Unless oh, yeah. You Gap make just something... asked us about the. Uh, yeah. Gap just asked us about the Alien Romulus and Beetlejuice trailer. I am not happy about Beetlejuice. I know that. Uh, Gorilla and I hate it. <laughs> I, haven't, yeah. I haven't seen it yet, but it's like it, it's it's just a cash grab. It's thir it's thirty five years too late. Yes. Yeah. From what I, I saw agree. of it, it looks like they collected Michael Keaton off of a park bench. <laughs> they didn't you mean do they much must to have taken it. him off a respirator or something. <laughs> no, he looks disheveled. It looks like he was drunk on a park bench, a already wearing the suit, and they just drag him. They put him in the back of a car, yeah, Ronnie put a quick makeup man. job and hair job on him, and then threw him up in front of the camera. I wouldn't be surprised if he was either half or completely in the bag during the entire filming of this thing. It'd probably be the only way he got through it. I hope they don't uh, do it. I, I hope right. that some reasonable... Hey, Jeremy, you do got to yeah. go for sure. Go go away I for sure now. I gotta, I gotta get ready person for. Person in Hollywood says, oh, yeah. "No, don't do Beetlejuice." Yeah, we'll shut down for current stock. Here, I'll get the link if anybody wants to. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna shut down here in a minute. Uh, Gorilla's gonna get the link to cringe stock. So everyone, head over there. Uh, Mikey, do you wanna? Uh, shall I add anything before we go? You got anything coming up? Uh, 
I believe we lost Mickey. <laughs> yeah, he says, dope. Yeah, Henry. Yeah. And there's the link for cringe stock. Uh, three or five ladies make all of themselves. $37 million in stock from committees. <laughs> well, he's old yeah. and I doubt of sign sound money uh sound bo body or mind at this point. Yeah. Well, we'll see. All he remembers is that Iger was his friend. Hey, yeah. Girl. Hey, gorilla. And see, I got the yeah. Uh, we'll be back on Saturday for Saturday morning cartoons. Tune into Gorilla's Random Thoughts tomorrow for the Walton's review. At the end of which, I'll reveal who wins the uh poll for Saturday's cartoon. So, we still got time to go vote until then. So, take and, care, everyone. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, and all ahead. I have to say for yeah, all I have to say for my channel is that everything will start April 1st. We'll be going five days a week. We have uh, three webcam streams we do, and then there's two, uh, a review that I do with Jay on Tuesday afternoons, and our topic time will come back by popular demand. So we're going to do that on Friday nights. We'll let you know the time when it gets closer. And don't forget, I'll be having my channel interview with Netters Network on Thursday, April 4th. Time to be determined, but I'll let you guys know that. So that's everything there for you, Jim. All right. Sounds good. Take care, everyone. See you over at Grinch Stock. See you at Grinch Stock. Bye, guys.